Oki Maya no, not many would be prepared to square off against Joseph Parker in the ring. But 31-year-old Junior Far is going to. Now, he was due to fight Parker in December, but just two days ago announced that surgery will delay the fight until next year. It'll be one to watch. For most of their lives, Junior and Joseph have followed similar paths, growing up in the same church and just down the road from each other. But while Parker has become a household name, the man who will go 12 rounds with him is not so well known. Tamati Rimini Sprout on Junior Far's Farno, Faith and Fighting Life. I see and hear just a lot of chaos. People cheering. Me just staying focused, but I'm soaking in the atmosphere, using that energy. I'm not scared of that environment. I'm, I just need to learn to embrace it and use it. The more I can do in this ring and the more that I can impress, the more I can help my son, the more I can help my family. But then that kind of thinking kind of gets left in the change room and then when I get in that ring, it's just all savage mentality. Growing up in South Auckland, there's a stereotype, you know, if you're big and you're brown, you've got to be tough. Like, make it seem a bit more professional. <laughs> Being a boxer, you know, you've got to be tough. Uh, Good to I see you, fellas. See you Would you describe yourself as a tough guy growing up? Heck no. No. Um, growing up, I never felt the need to prove to anyone that I'm strong. And my parents, they always taught us to be kind and just to, like, you know, keep your morals, which are the ones that I grew up with in the church, you know? I always get told that I have a soft handshake. I don't feel like I need to, like, you know, grab, grab, like, you know, someone's hand firmly for, like, anything that, that just doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, I'm just a soft dude, man. At six foot five, 120 kilos, Junior Far is probably the biggest softie going around. Mum Edith reckons growing up, he was the laziest too. He never gave us any grief at all. And I kept on thinking, why is there nothing wrong with him? You know, were, he was a little obedient child, but he was always lazy as well. And he still is. I mean, apart from being a boxer, but he is so lazy. Yeah. Your mum described you as a lazy kid. <laughs> <laughs> lazy child is how she described you. Yeah, I was. I, I, well, I wanted to be, but my dad didn't let me. He wanted to make sure that I took advantage of my body. We're in your big <laughs> garage, aka gym, aka space below your family house, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now we're in the dungeon, man. So this is where I basically done all my training when I was younger. Junior's dad, Wayne Far Senior, a talented amateur boxer himself, taught him the basics. When I was, I think, 15, 16, boxing training here started to get a bit more serious for me. And then, you know, I asked if I can get, uh, go to a gym if I can actually start training properly. And then uh, his first response was no. Why did he say no? Like, you know, I was a soft child. Um, wouldn't get into any rough sports. If I, if I played rugby, I'll probably get a play of the day because I was the one that got hurt and started crying in the middle of the match, you know? <laughs> so I think naturally he just said no, but just, just to protect me, you know? He didn't think I had the heart or guts for it. After my first fight, I said to myself, I never want to do this again. You never, you never wanted to get never in the ring? Never wanted to do this again. Why? Because nah. of how I felt. I, 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 put, I put so much into that fight. I lost so much energy, man. Like, I won the fight, but I was just so gassed. I felt like I was going to die. I was just sitting there in the back of the change room. I was just like, never again. <laughs> never again. <laughs> you glad you stuck to it? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, I'll, yes, yeah, like as scary as the sport is, I love it. It didn't take long for Junior to make his mark. And this is how you get noticed. Pretty much straight away, I was at the top of the amateur ranks. The problem was, he soon ran out of people to fight. So 2009, I didn't really feel the passion for it anymore. I didn't feel that competitive spirit. 
Then another young heavyweight from just down the road started making some noise. I remember I was working at the time and I go upstairs to the smoker room and then there's this newspaper article on Joseph Parker. This, you know, new kid, he's the next big thing. That is when I thought, oh, now it's, now it's time to get back in the ring. I prepared for that tournament and we meet in the ring in the finals. I figure out a way to beat him and I beat him. Um, and that was basically the start of our rivalry. It's incredible to think that you at that point were kind of stepping away from the sport mm. and he almost kind of reignited the passion, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Junior's rise continued. We're about to go out. Representing Tonga, Junior fought at two Commonwealth Games. Coming home in 2010 with a bronze medal around his neck. For those fights that I represented Tonga, it just kind of felt different in my chest. For amateur boxers, the Olympics are the pinnacle. For Junior, it was no different. But in 2012, he failed to qualify and soon after, hung up his gloves. So we met at a YSA dance for our church. And he wooed you? Oh no, he's got, he's got no game at all. <laughs> he stood there like a stalker and didn't say a word to me until... Well, he's pretty hard to miss. <laughs> until I said hello to him. I was like, oh, this guy's good looking. Junior picked up full-time work as a factory foreman and with Talia by his side gave living a normal life a go. Started the new stage of my life, which was to get married. And then we started a family, you know, and then... I had my son Ezra. Hi Ezra. Ezra. Not long after Ezra was born, he was diagnosed with autism. Jump, jump, jump. You're so heavy, so. Are you upside down? He does have sensory issues and stuff, and like we can't really take him to the mall now because he'll have full on meltdowns, and we pretty much have to drag him out crying and um, screaming and stuff. My is white. But you do get people that look like, what's wrong with this child? You need to discipline him. You, you know, just think it's a naughty child playing it. With autism, it's an invisible disorder. Is that dead? Is that dead? Yeah, so that's something that I really want to push because, like, you know, because, because the more people understand, the less fear there is and the less judgment there is. Four years ago, Junior and Talia welcomed baby number two, Hazel. Life was good. There was a period there where Junior gave up boxing and worked mm -hmm. full time. Yeah. What was that like? It was nice having him just basically to ourselves and having that typical lifestyle. Um, but you could tell deep down he wasn't really happy. Like, you know, he loved being with his child and he was a new dad and stuff and where it was new to, to us, but he didn't, yeah. His passion is boxing, and he just lights up when he boxes. I was just living a normal, everyday dad life. But there was always, like, something there. I, th I think it was just unfinished business. The business of professional boxing is lucrative and potentially life-changing. Frank. Junior could see a better future for his family in the ring. Your wife loved having you home. Your son was just diagnosed with autism. Yeah. It's a brave jump to, to say, I'm going to give that all away and get back into boxing and become pro. Yeah. What was that decision like? At that time, Joseph Parker was at the start of his professional career. And now it's time to go to work. People knew that I beat Joseph, and every time he would fight, my name would always pop up. You know, people would, like, you know, talk about me. So, Junior went about reminding the boxing world of who he is. Another right hand from Fod. Three, four, five, six, seven shots. Here he is loading up the guns now. This fight is all over. Family was Junior's motivation, but Dad Wayne there was the one who pushed him. He's the reason why I started boxing. In August last year, he fell ill. He was diagnosed with uh, cancer. I remember him telling us that he has like six months to live. From the time he was diagnosed to the time he passed was like six weeks. 
we had a family meeting and the doctor came in and said, oh yeah, looks like the cancer's burst and it's just spreading through your body now. Um, and then from there is when he basically said his goodbye speech. And that was the one time I cried. Junior out of all my kids was the closest to his dad. <clears throat> and because it's all quiet, he holds a lot of stuff in him. Mm. And it's hard to tell what's in his mind. But, um, and I know that Julian goes through a lot of grief with, with Dad, and he doesn't even talk to us about it. Mm. But I know deep inside that um, he's really, really hurt. He misses his dad, as all, all of us, but Juna mainly because his life was with Dad. Did he give you any, any last advice? I just remember him saying, you know, just to, you know, keep on going with my boxing career no matter what happens. Also, he said, um, you know, stay in the church. It's just sad that Dad's not around to see this fight. The biggest fight of his life, though, now unexpectedly on hold. An issue with Junior's bloods means he'll need surgery. It'll postpone his bout with Joseph Parker, but it won't dent his self-belief. I am better than Joseph Parker, and I've believed that for a long time. He's an underdog, which he's fine about, but he sees this as, a, as an opportunity to really showcase his skills. When the day comes, his family will be there, ringside, cheering him on. Just know we're all supporting you, bro. We love you. It is a lot of money, no denying it, especially with COVID and stuff. We are very blessed to have that. But, yeah, in the next year or two, we'll be able to have our own home. He's fighting for them. This is such a big opportunity for myself and my family and my career. Will it change your life? Yeah, most definitely.